If you're a beginner learning web design, here are 10 free tools that will give you everything you need to start making awesome websites. Let's dive in. Number one is Figma. So this is the most important tool to learn because this is the primary design tool that you're gonna be using to mock up your websites. So it functions pretty much like a canvas. So you can add text, you can add shapes, you can add pictures, whatever you want. You have full customizability to make whatever website designs are in your head. And it can be a little bit difficult at first. So what I recommend doing is going to YouTube and just looking up a crash course and just try to do one that was made relatively recently because Figma often changes their uh, UI year by year. But this is definitely an important tool to learn. So definitely become familiar with it. Number two is Mobbin. So it can be really hard to come up with designs totally from scratch. So Mobbin allows you to get inspiration from different websites and not only just random websites, but really popular business websites. So you can look and you can look at different hero sections and you can copy them. And what I'll do is I'll just paste them into Figma and just get different inspiration ideas for websites I want to build. And why I like using Mobbin as opposed to other options like Dribbble or Behance is because these are big business websites, there's a lot of research that goes into making them. So not only do they look nice, but they're also really functional as well versus those other sites like Dribbble and Behance, they might look really nice, but they may not be the most functional. Number three is CSS Peeper. So let's say you have a website that you're really inspired by. You can use CSS Peeper to inspect the styles of that website. So let's say we're really inspired by Hulu. We can go to CSS Peeper and we can look at any of the elements on this page, like this text, for instance. We can see the font family, the font size, and we can see the distance it is from different elements on the page. So this gives us a really good look at just design principles that uh, websites use to structure their content. You get to look at sizing of things, you can look at colors, you can look at the entire color palette of the website, and again, just look at the different types of colors that different websites use. So this is really helpful, especially when learning how far apart to space things, how big to make certain text elements, how big to make certain uh, image components, Highly recommend. Number four is Color Mind. So it can be really hard to pick colors and figure out what works well on a website. So what Color Mind does is you can generate a color palette, and not only can you do that, it'll apply that palette to a sample website below. So this is a really good way to figure out what types of colors would work well on a website. Or let's say you have a color in mind, like let's say we want to use some sort of an orange color here. We can generate that lock it in place, and then generate a color palette from there, and you can get a sense on what that might look, look like on a website. Number five is font share. So if you have trouble picking out different types of fonts, font share comes in handy because it shows you all sorts of different font pairings. And so you can scroll through, and once you find one that you think might work well for your project, you can add it to your styles, go up here, and then hit use, go to proceed, and then you can download those fonts right to your computer so that you can use those for your project. Number six is Reloom icons. And this has thousands of icons that you can use for your website. So let's say we wanna get a home icon here. We can type in home and we can actually copy this for Figma, which is really helpful. So if we go to Figma here and we create a frame, we can go in here, paste that in, and what's really neat is this imports as an SVG. So you can actually go over here and you can change the color of that icon to whatever you want, whatever you want. So lots of customizability when you import things as SVGs. Number seven is Canva, which is a graphic design tool. And predominantly what I use this for is for getting assets for my website. So let's say we wanna get a graphic of a capybara because we're making a website all about capybaras. You can get photos of them, you can get videos, you can get graphics. Let's say you wanna get a graphic and you can just get a photo of a capybara or a graphic of one. Um, now, if you see a crown, that means you gotta pay for it, but as long as it doesn't have a crown, you can use it for free and you can resize it as you will. And once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and download it to your computer and bada bing, you can use it for your project. Number eight is remove BG. So a lot of times we wanna remove the background of a photo. And so this does exactly that. So let's use that capybara that we just had. We're gonna drag it into 
the remove BG and it does its thing and it removes the background so that now we just have the main photo of the capybara, no background, and we can use that for our web design project. Number nine is Power Toys Color Picker. This is the only one that's a Microsoft exclusive, but there is a Mac alternative. And what this does is it finds the hex code for any color that's on the display of your monitor. So for example, if we're making a color palette and we want whatever brown this is of the capybara, I can hit the Microsoft symbol, Shift and C, and it opens up the color picker and you can see it'll select that color or really anything that is on your monitor, even like random stuff like icons. And so if you click on whatever color you want, you can copy the hex code and then use that for your project. And then if you use a Mac, I haven't used this, but they have something called System Color Picker that you can download on the Mac App Store. And I think this works pretty similarly. Number 10 is Hike. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it allows you to download all sorts of organic shapes and blobs that you can use to add all sorts of visual flourishes to your website. So you can add different blobs that you can use as a mask for an image or even as a background uh, behind an image. Uh, you can create waves, like a lot of times you'll see these as borders for different sections of a website. So you can do that. You can add different gradients, circle splatters, blob scenes, all sorts of stuff on here that you can use to add just visual flourishes to your website. Number 11 is Magic Pattern, and this allows you to create those really cool mesh gradients that are often used as backgrounds for hero sections of different websites. So you can go over here and randomize the colors to get different variations of these mesh backgrounds. Once you find one you like, you can even specify the color, tweak the color that you want. Uh, you can also add grain, which is really cool to give it kind of a vintage vibe. And then from there, you can export it and then use it for your project. Number 12 is some sort of a no-code development tool such as Webflow or Framer. So I save this to the end because truthfully, if you're a beginner, this probably isn't something I would learn right away. I would really just focus on mastering Figma since this is actually where you'll be doing the bulk of your design work when it comes to designing your websites. But the problem with Figma is that it doesn't make things live on the internet. Like you can't make something in Figma and then publish it on the internet. You need some sort of a no-code development tool. And so that's what Webflow and Framer are. And as far as the difference, Webflow is definitely a steeper learning curve because it's more targeted towards developers. The UI is going to look, frankly, a little more daunting. Uh, but it'll, the benefit of Webflow is it allows you to learn the underpinnings on how websites are structured and how they operate. Framer is easier to use, especially if you're used to Figma because the layout looks very similar. And so um, if you're more concerned about just ease of use, this would definitely be your option. But either way, I probably would not bother with this first. Again, just work with Figma, try to get really good at using that tool. And then once you have proficiency with doing that and have gained just an overall understanding of different design principles, then you can move on to learn different no-code design tools. Now, it's one thing to have all these tools, but it's a totally different thing to actually make use of them. And if you're new to a lot of these tools, then it may be overwhelming to figure out when and why you would use these. So I recently made a video talking about how I would learn web design if I were to start from scratch all over again. So I highly rec recommend checking that out if you want to learn web design in a fun and sustainable way. Subscribe if you like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.